What's the area of a circle? You might know it's pi r squared. But where did this formula come from? Well, it's a bit difficult to find the area of a circle because of its curved boundary. So one way is to use familiar shapes made up of straight lines, a polygon, to approximate its area. Let's see how. Imagine a hexagon inside a circle. Does it approximate the circle closely? No, it leaves a lot of gaps. If we increase the number of sides, the gaps reduce. For example, this octagon approximates the circle better. We can keep increasing the number of sides and eventually the polygon's area will approximate the circle's area very closely. So let's use this idea to find the circle's area. Let's start with an octagon with eight equal sides. If we join its corners to the center, we get eight equal triangles. The area of each triangle is half times base times height. So the total area is eight times this. We can rearrange this as half times eight times base times height. This term is the sum of the bases of all eight triangles, which is the perimeter of this shape. Similarly, a 15-sided polygon is further close to the circle and has an area of 15 times the area of a triangle, or this. Again, half times perimeter times height. Let's increase the number of sides to 30. Its area is almost equal to that of the circle, which is 30 times the area of a triangle, or this. Again, this term is the perimeter of this 30-sided polygon. So no matter the number of sides, the total area will always be half times perimeter times height. Now as we keep increasing the number of sides of the polygon, it will eventually turn into a circle. It has to. There is no escape. At that point, the area of the polygon will become equal to that of the circle. The triangles formed will be infinitely small, but still, their areas would add up to the circle's area. Now at this point, the height of each triangle will equal the radius of the circle and the perimeter of this polygon will equal to the perimeter of the circle, which is 2 pi r. So its area is half times perimeter times height, which is half times 2 pi r times r, which is pi r squared. And that's how we find the area of a circle. Let me show you another way of finding a circle's area. This time, we'll turn it into a simpler shape. Let's start by dividing this circle into four equal parts. Here's the first part. Take the second part and flip it. These two are just the radius of the circle, so it will perfectly align. Similarly, place the remaining two parts. Now let's cut this part into two equal halves and bring one of the parts here. This side equals the radius of the circle and these curves together make the boundary of the circle. Finding this shape's area isn't straightforward yet because of these curves, but it gets simpler if we break the circle into smaller parts. Let's break this into eight parts, rearrange them as before and cut and join one piece. We get a similar shape with shorter curves this time, but this side is still its radius and all these curves still add up to the circle's boundary. Now divide the circle into even smaller parts and repeat the steps. It's the same story. Here's the radius and all these small curves make up the circle's boundary. What happens if we keep dividing the circle into smaller and smaller parts? Eventually, these parts become infinitely small. When we rearrange them, the curves at the top flatten out and this shape becomes a perfect rectangle. Its area still equals that of the circle. Just like before, this side is equal to the circle's radius. What about this side? We know that both opposite sides combined make the circle's boundary or the circumference, which is 2 pi r. So this side must be half of that, which is pi r. And so the area of this rectangle is pi r times r, that is pi r squared, which is also the circle's area the same as what we found earlier. Now there is yet another way of finding the circle's area. We'll again divide it into smaller parts, but this time in a very different way. Here's the idea. Imagine creating narrow strips parallel to the circle's boundary, then spread them out and stack them on top of one another. The total area of the circle will be the same as this, sort of a triangular shape. Now using this idea of strips, can you figure out how to find the area of the circle? Will it give us the same result? 
Give it a thought and let us know in the comments.